I've been involved in constitutional law since I graduated from law school in 1970, in the, in the prior century. And this is one of the most exciting cases I've, I've worked on because it relates to a, a basic principle of states' rights. In a way, it's not to give rights to states, it's to give rights to us, the people. When, when the 13 states got together, they understood that some states had a lot of land, you know, Virginia, some states had very little land, uh, Rhode Island. <laughs> Virginia claimed land from the eastern shore all the way to uh, the west coast. In fact, part of California was originally part of Virginia, according to the title it got from the king. Well, people did not, didn't, didn't want that to happen, and they didn't want some states uh, to be uh, unequal to others. They should be equal in what you call sovereign powers. They should have the same powers over their land that, that other, other states had. And so they had this principle which the Supreme Court has called the equal footing doctrine. All states come in on an equal footing. We knew how to acquire land, but the framers wanted to make sure that, that there was this power, indeed obligation, to dispose of the land as a, as a way of, of developing uh, the nation. The idea was that they would turn over the land to the federal government, the unappropriated land, the so-called public lands, uh, to the federal government was so that it could give clear titles. There wouldn't be a dispute about who owns the land, the federal government, the state government. No, everyone understood that the federal government would engage in the regular disposition of the land. And they did that at first. Uh, they did this for 38 states, Maine, Texas, Tennessee, Vermont, Kentucky, Hawaii. In all of those, the federal government turned over uh, to the states the public lands when they became states. Not so for, for Utah, Oregon, and other states. Uh, Twelve are in a distinctly orphan-like uh, position. They're, they're less equal than others. If you drew a, a longitudinal line uh, roughly through Denver, you'd find to the right of that line facing the map, the federal government own, owns hardly anything. And to the left of that line, the federal government owns at least half or substantially more than that in, in many of the states. And if you subtract from all that land, the federal parks, you know, the, uh, the Grand Canyon and so on, the Fed, that's minuscule compared to all the rest that the federal government owns, and it lies fallow. For example, in Utah, the federal government owns more land than the entire state of New York. It is one of the counties that it owns an amount of land greater than the entire state of Connecticut. Over two-thirds of the state is owned by the federal government. The legislature and people of Utah and the governor, if they all agree, could not string a fiber optic cable across the state without getting permission from a bunch of faceless federal bureaucrats in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, that's not what the framers intended. It's, it's not the way it was. It was in this country until about 1976. People, people don't seem to understand that. Now, what the Federal Land uh, uh, Policy and Management Act tells us in 1976 is that 12 of the 50 states are going to be treated second rate, not on an equal footing. We didn't know that at first. I mean, the way it was phrased, it still allowed some sales. But the way it's been interpreted, uh, we have figured out that the federal government is not about to allow these 12 states to be like all of the others. Here we have this problem, what is to be done? The Constitution has given us a remedy, provides that states have the power to sue the federal government for violation of their rights. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased to be working with a great team of, of lawyers. There's uh, a John Howard, who's a lawyer in California, who's been working on land problems for years, has a tremendous knowledge of both the early history and all the case law in this area. Uh, Jim Jardine, who's a very respected practitioner in, in Salt Lake City. Uh, Richard Siemens, a professor at the University of Idaho, a former assistant to the Attorney General, or to the Solicitor General. He's argued over a dozen cases, 15 or more cases, before the U.S. Supreme Court, an expert on Supreme Court practice. Uh, George Wentz, who uh, has his law firm in uh, Louisiana, very knowledgeable about the areas. And, and uh, then there's little old me. This is a good, solid case, and what the federal government is doing is wrong, and the Western states you uniformly object to the federal control. They know how to take care of the land, and they can do a better job uh, than people several thousand miles away.